I am in pain. And it is self-inflicted. And I like it. I tend to go through an endless number of tools, services and formats in search for better ways to do my job. I'm never satisfied. I always think that there is something better out there. So I go through pain of learning a new tool or a language only to jump into a new one shortly afterwards. Spending endless hours going through new stuff does not make sense. But I cannot help myself. Hopefully, I might save you from doing it yourself. That is my goal. Go through the pain of trying out everything so that you don't have to. Lately, I've been exploring different ways to manage manifests, mostly for Kubernetes resources, but in reality, for anything that can be defined as data, meaning YAML, JSON, XML, and so on and so forth. We'll take a quick break for me to introduce you to Hostman, the sponsor of this video. Hostman offers affordable cloud services, including servers, databases, application platforms, and quite a few other things. Now, when I say affordable, I mean really, really affordable. Prices start at just $1 per month with free bandwidth. They have free tech support 24 seven with an average response time of under 15 minutes. New users get hundred bucks credit for seven days trial. Link is in the description. Big thanks to Hostman for sponsoring this video. And now let's go back to the main subject. Today, I want to explore yet another language designed to work with data structures. And that language is KCL. It is a constraint based record and functional language. And as I'm pronouncing it, I realized that such a description might not make sense to most of us. So here's a simplified version. KCL is a language designed to work with data with the goal to produce YAML or JSON. From that perspective, it is similar to Helm, Customize, JSONnet, Carvel YTT, Pickle, and my current favorite, Q. Now, you might be asking, why do we need another one of those? And that's what I've been asking myself and others as well. Nevertheless, I'm here to explore it and see if it makes sense to use it. Now, before we proceed, let me tell you what I'm looking for first, and then we'll go into whatever I'm showing you. I want to use a language or a DSL that is designed for data structures. The reason for that is that YAML or JSON I might be producing is data. That requirement alone discards Helm since Helm does not understand data. Helm is a free text templating engine that has no notion, no notion whatsoever of data. It is based on Go templating that is equally bad at generating HTML pages as generating data. Nevertheless, Helm is the de facto standard for third party apps, so I have to use it for that, but not for my apps. Then there is Customize, that is my favorite when simple scenarios are concerned. It is not a language, but rather a mechanism that allows us to overlay YAML files with other YAML files. It is simple and effective, but it fails miserably, miserably for anything but very simple scenarios. When things are done right, Scenarios are simple, so I use it heavily, yet there are cases when I need more. Then there is JSON at Carvel YTT and a myriad of other solutions, which for one reason or another, I gave up. Currently, I'm torn between Q with Timoni and Pickle. I explored all of those, so I won't go into them today. Check them out if you're not familiar with them. The links are over there in the description. Both of those are doing just what I need them to do. And that's where masochism kicks in. I don't need another one, yet I'm exploring KCL. There are a few reasons for doing that besides enjoying self-inflicting pain. Enough of that, let's go back to my requirements. Besides the need for a language or a DSL that understands data structures instead of being general purpose, anything goes, I also need to be able to define schemas, but also to import schemas. It would be silly for me to reinvent the wheel by creating schemas for, let's say, Kubernetes APIs. I expect those to be readily available and in case of CRDs, to have the option to import them from a cluster or a Git repo. I also insist on immutability. I experience too many issues when working with mutable data. I want to avoid that at all costs. Finally, I don't want to spend weeks trying to learn it. A day is more than enough. If it takes more than that, excluding advanced features, 
It is too complicated, at least for my tiny brain. I cannot do it. It needs to be easy. I'm looking for a data structure language that comes with pre-built schemas, but also allows me to create them myself or import them from somewhere. I need it to be immutable and it cannot be hard to learn. Now, with that in mind, let's take a look at KCL and see whether it fits those requirements and whether it might convince me to drop Q or Pickle, one of those two. So, let's see what KCL is all about. And to do that, I need to go to my computer. So, let's, let's go over there. Before we begin, I must say that KCL is a CNCF project, meaning that it is not in the hands of a single company making its future dependent, much less on the wimps of that company. It generated a lot of buzz and it has a very, very active community. There must be something in there, right? So, right now, I am inside a project that requires a rather large amount of YAML. That YAML is big enough and with enough complexity and repetition that it makes no sense to write it directly. I need to generate it somehow. And I was about to switch to Q when I got introduced to KCL. So, I thought, what the heck? Let's give it a try. As you can expect, I can execute KCL with the path to the code, hit the enter key and there we go. The output is over 150 lines of YAML. Now that you saw the monstrosity that was generated, let's take a look at the KCL definition that made that possible. At the very top, I'm importing schemas, functions, global variables and a few other things. There's common that contains, as you might expect from the name, common stuff that I could not place in a specific box. Then there are deployment, service and ingress, which are my abstractions that match corresponding Kubernetes resources, even though this YAML is generating cross-plane compositions and not Kubernetes resources directly. Finally, there is Kubernetes provider config that is a cross-plane provider config. Such an organization allows me to avoid repetition since, as you will see soon, very soon, those imports are repeated across other KCL manifests. The actual output is generated by evoking composition schema defined in common. We'll see it soon. That schema already contains all the values that are the same for all the variations as well as variables that need to be defined explicitly. In this case, I have to define only the name, the labels and the resources array that in this case contains deployment service and ingress schemas also imported at the top, at the very top. Here's a variation of that manifest that generates a similar output, but with a few differences. This KCL definition will generate a different composition. Besides a different name and labels, there are customized versions of the deployment service and ingress by passing, and it's customized by passing variables to their respective schemas. We'll see those soon. For now, let's take a look at the output of that KCL definition. That's a longer one with around 200 lines of YAML. Now, let's shift focus on the imports. One of those uh, was common. Most of that file contains a schema I'm using to generate the output I need. There is composition with a few hard-coded values like API version and kind, and a few sub-schemas like metadata and spec. Metadata, on the other hand, defines a string variable name. That's the name we saw at the very beginning. Whoever is using that schema has has to define it or KCL will throw an error. That continues on and on with different schemas containing either fields that are hard-coded or variables that need to be defined by whomever is using them. The syntax itself is pretty much JSON with key values being separated by equal signs and uh, values and types being separated by colon. Objects are defined with curly braces and arrays with square brackets. There are a few more things that are different from JSON, but in general, if you know JSON or Q, you should be able to pick it up quickly. If you're not familiar with either of those, you'll still be able to learn it relatively fast. KCL is one of the most powerful, yet one of the easiest data structure languages I used. And we'll talk about that later. We can also use functions like, in this case, patches. In KCL, functions are called lambda, and this one defines a single argument name that is a string and returns an array of objects. Finally, that definition defines a variable manifest spec that I'm using as a way to avoid typing that path. 
There's more though, much more than we can explore in this video. So I will focus only on a few aspects of KCL, which we can see in deployment.k file, which is one of the imports we saw at the very start. Look at that import. KCL comes with pre-built schemas for all core Kubernetes APIs and many others. In this case, we are importing Kate's API apps v1 and using it to define Kate's apps deployment, which surprise, surprise, is a Kubernetes deployment. Now, don't be confused that the deployment is defined inside spec for provider manifest. That's part of a cross plugin composition, which I'm not exploring in this video, but only using as an example of what KCL can do. The deployment schema I'm defining here is inheriting from the Kubernetes object schema I defined in the common. That means that it inherits everything from that one and I can define only the things that are different. Inside that scheme, I defined a few variables with names prefixed with underscore. Those are not exported and as such are mutable. That's a great feature of KCL. Exported variables are immutable. Non-exported are not. That might be one of the things I like the most about KCL. It's immutable when exported data is concerned, but it still allows us to mutate non-exported data. If you're not familiar with terms exported and non-exported, think of them as public and private in other languages. Only exported data is output to YAML or JSON. We can see, for example, that the underscore DB enabled is a Boolean variable with the default value of false, and the rest follows the similar pattern. The last non-exported variable shows the usage of the format function that will replace open closed curly braces with the value of common manifest spec. What else? Uh, the patches value is an interesting one. It showcases unioning of collections. Over there, I'm saying that the value should be a combination of a list defined in common, which is patches deployment, and whatever is defined below. There are some common entries that should be defined in all patches and by including items from that collection with whatever is defined below, I am avoiding repetition. Patches itself, if you remember, is a function that returns an array of objects. That's the one we saw when we explored the common K file. The last thing I want to show is the ability to define expressions. In this case, it is a simple if conditional that will include a few more entries into the list if underscore db enabled is set to True. We saw only a fraction of what KCL can do, but I think that's enough syntax for today. KCL is massive and you should spend a bit of time going through the docs yourself. You should do it. Outside the syntax itself, there are a couple of other things I feel are worth mentioning. The CLI itself is not overwhelming, yet it does have a few important features outside of the obvious ones that allow us to generate uh, YAML or JSON from KCL definitions. We can, for example, use import to convert existing JSON, YAML, Go, Structs, Terraform, Open API, Kubernetes, CRDs, and other formats into KCL. And that's great as a starting point. We can use mod to initiate a KCL project and uh, add dependencies like those we saw earlier when I showed Kubernetes schemas and to package KCL or to pull it or push it into a registry. There is the option to play with KCL by spinning up a local server that will allow us to interact with KCL in a browser and so on and so forth. Now, IDE support is superb. I'm using VS Code and the KCL extension is great. It provides syntax highlighting, autocomplete, go to definitions, and a few other features that make working with KCL a breeze. There is also integration and support for a bunch of other tools like Argo CD and Flux, CI pipelines, HashiVault, uh, Terraform, and a few others. Okay, now let's say that this is as far as Volk True is concerned. Let's talk about pros and cons, good things and the bad things. Okay, this is more comfortable. Let's talk about pros and cons. As a reminder, my requirements are to have a language or a DSL that is focused on data structures, the ability to work with schemas, immutability, and ease of learning. KCL meets all of those and so much more. As a matter of fact, I could not find a single thing I don't like, except that I was initially confused with the documentation, but that was my fault. I did not read it well. I was too hasty. If I would have to nitpick, to find silly reasons, silly things I don't like, I would say that the only potential but minor issue is that the documentation contains quite a few spelling errors in the English version. 
I can only guess that the Chinese version is better, but for obvious reasons, look at me, I cannot confirm that. Nevertheless, that's a minor issue that does not affect the quality of the documentation. And that's it. That's the only negative thing I could find. KCL is awesome. And here are only a few out of many reasons why I think so. To begin with, documentation is amazing. Even though I had initial trouble understanding how it is organized. It is clear that a lot of attention is put into the design of the language and documenting every detail that matters. I disliked it at first because of the docs, but now that I went through most of it, I can safely say that is my fault. The docs are great. Next, having all exported data immutable is just what I think we need and that's what KCL provides. The addition of mutable non-exported data is a great additional feature, but immutability is what makes it special. Not the only one, but one of the tools. What else? Uh, yes, it is relatively easy to learn. You will be up and running in no time, a day at most. You will not know everything about KCL and what it offers, and that takes time normally, but you will be able to do most of the things in a day. Let's see, is there anything else? Oh yeah, it is powerful. I did not find anything missing. Everything I needed so far is there. And I know that there's so much more. So if my needs change in the future, I'm confident that KCL will be able to accommodate them. What else? Uh, yes, VS Code plugin is great. Syntax highlighting, autocomplete, go to definitions and all other features we might expect are there. It's a pleasure to work with KCL in VS Code. Finally, KCL is a project donated to Cloud Native Computing Foundation. That makes it less prone to future license changes and makes it more likely to have a vibrant community and a diverse community. Personally, I cannot sit on more than two chairs at a time. So, I mean, this is one, but I cannot, I cannot work with more than two tools of the kind at the same time. So, until now, I was torn between Q and Pickle, and I will kick one of those out to gain space for KCL. Uh, pickle, Pickle, you're out. KCL is in. I might be biased though, I love Q and KCL looks very, very, very similar to it, except that it is easier to learn. So, it's those two now, Q and KCL. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one, cheers.